Hi, today I want to tell you about the non-surgical treatment methods that we use in breast fibroadenomas. Fibroadenomas are benign tumors of the breast and seen in about 10% of healthy women. They are most commonly diagnosed between 15 to 30 years of age. Since they are stimulated by the estrogen, they grow in pregnancy and generally shrink in menopause. Histologically, fibroadenomas are composed of fibroid and glandular tissue. In more than 90% of the cases, fibroadenomas are less than 3 cm in size, although giant fibroadenomas exceeding 10 cm in diameter may also occasionally be seen. Most fibroadenomas are detected during the manual examination performed by the doctor or the patient herself. With manual examination, fibroadenomas are palpated as round, oval, firm and mobile masses with smooth contours. Because of their high mobility, they are also called breast mice. On mammography and ultrasound, they are typically seen as round, oval and well-defined masses. Although these findings are typical of fibroadenoma, definitive diagnosis can only be made by biopsy. The ideal biopsy technique for breast fibroadenomas is ultrasound-guided core biopsy. If the fibroadenoma is small, does not grow or cause symptoms, and the diagnosis is proven with biopsy, then a regular ultrasound follow-up is generally all that is required. If the fibroadenoma is large, gross or cause symptoms, then treatment is indicated. In routine practice, however, some of the patients for whom only follow-up is recommended may also prefer to be treated. The classic treatment of fibroadenoma is surgical operation or lumpectomy. Although surgery can completely remove any fibroadenoma, it has some disadvantages for the patients and also for the doctors. First, a large scar tissue may develop at the operation site, which is aesthetically not desirable in the breast. Second, if a large fibroadenoma is removed, a depression or deformation may develop at the skin. And third, the scar tissue at the operation site may mimic breast cancer on mammography and ultrasound, which may cause patient anxiety, unnecessary follow-up or biopsy. And fourth, if the patient has multiple fibroadenomas, these disadvantages multiply and surgery may become an unacceptable treatment option. In fact, fibroadenomas can be treated percutaneously through a small hole at the skin using several methods. These methods can be divided into two main groups. The first group includes the treatments that remove fibroadenomas completely from the breast. These are blasts, and the vacuum biopsy system. These methods allow the patient to get rid of the fibroadenoma immediately and also the pathologic evaluation of the removed mass. In vacuum biopsy system, the skin and the area around fibroadenoma is numbed, a small incision is made and the vacuum needle is advanced to the fibroadenoma. Then the needle is placed into the fibroadenoma the machine is turned on and the mass is removed out of the breast in small pieces. These pieces are then collected and sent for pathologic evaluation. Blast or the breast lesion excision system is another method that removes the fibroadenoma completely. In this method, spatial wires exit from the needle, go around the fibroadenoma and reach its other end. These wires burn the tissue with radiofrequency energy and cut the fibroadenoma off the surrounding tissue. 
When the wires reach the other end of the fibroadenoma, they get locked and grasp the tumor firmly. Then the whole fibroadenoma can be pulled out and removed completely. The second group of non-surgical methods that treat fibroadenomas are cryoablation and HIFU. These methods destroy the fibroadenomas in the breast instead of removing and make them gradually smaller. In cryoablation, first the skin and the area around fibroadenoma is numbed with local anesthetic and a spatial needle is placed through the skin into the center of fibroadenoma under ultrasound guidance. Then the fibroadenoma is destroyed by freezing at minus 40 degrees. The ice ball formation can be seen clearly with ultrasound during the procedure. Cryoablation is completely pain-free since the cold is a natural local anesthetic. The frozen fibroadenoma becomes dead and progressively smaller by time. Its symptoms will also decrease or disappear completely. Cryoablation was approved by the FDA for the treatment of fibroadenomas up to 4 cm in diameter. Studies have shown that more than 90% of such fibroadenomas cannot be felt anymore by hand one year after cryoablation. The other method that treats fibroadenomas without removing is HIFU. HIFU or High Intensity Focused Ultrasound uses ultrasound waves that pass through the skin. These waves are focused in a small elliptical area in the fibroadenoma, which is several millimeters in size. In this area, the temperature reaches to 80 to 100 degrees, which is enough to cook the tissue. This area is then moved in the fibroadenoma so that the whole mass is ablated. The cooked fibroadenoma becomes dead and progressively smaller by time, as it does after cryoablation. All the non-surgical methods that I mentioned so far have their inherent advantages and disadvantages. For each patient, the most suitable treatment must be determined based on the number, size and location of fibroadenomas as well as the preference of the patient. Whichever is decided, these methods have some advantages over the surgical treatment. First, they are performed under local anesthesia. Second, the patient does not feel any pain. Third, there is no skin incision, scar or deformation after the treatments. Fourth, if the patient has multiple fibroadenomas, all the tumors can be treated in one single session. And fifth, the patient can be discharged in a few hours after the treatment. Thank you for your attention.